that just doesn't quite work out well. For instance, if I were to talk to you about World War II, I might talk to you about a, world that, a war that threatened to consume the whole world, something that threatened to change every tomorrow. I might talk to you about the day that that war ended and a cathartic outpouring of relief and joy and happiness that came from it. It would probably take me thousands of pages, maybe even millions of words, to build that story for you. Or I can make it real simple, and I can show you a picture. And suddenly you would understand, in a single glance that day, so much better than if I'd spent those thousands of pages explaining it to you. And you'd understand it, not just because this is a famous image, though it is, but because as humans, we connect on a very basic and visceral level to pictures like this. There are simply times when words fail, and we have to go to pictures. And this is true if we're talking about grand, sweeping history, but it's just as true if we're trying to do something as simple and prosaic as sell a product. Now, traditionally, marketing has really been the realm of words. Think about it even in terms of the internet. Back in the olden days, back when we were on those creaky 56 and 29K dial-up modems, you couldn't have a whole lot of pictures because they loaded so slowly. You could go make a sandwich while the webpage was loaded. If you even think back to 1995, this is what Amazon.com looked like in 1995. There is one picture, and that is their logo, which is even pretty funny when we look at it today. The fact of the matter was, people in those days, when they bought from the internet, were buying on faith. They were buying based on descriptions alone in the hope that the right thing would show up in the mail. Let's compare that with what we have today. It's almost the opposite situation. You can hardly find any text on the page because Amazon understands that the principal rule of good marketing is the same as the principal rule of good writing, and that is to show, not tell. They understand that they can spend paragraphs telling you how the Kindle Fire HD is going to revolutionize your tablet experience, or they can simply show you a picture of it. They can show you how it works, they can show it to you in action, and they know that when you reach your own conclusions about how that tablet is going to fit into your life, that's going to mean so much more than pages and pages of text. Now, I'm not standing up here telling you that you can completely cut out regular written word in your marketing. You can't cut out content marketing. It's A, not true, and B, if I told you that, I'd be out of the job. The best marketing happens when great words and great pictures come. Because like that picture I showed you at the beginning of the kids in Times Square, without context around that, you wouldn't understand what the picture was. It would still tell a story, but it might be a totally different story. Maybe a couple who just got married. Maybe a couple who were happy to be in honeymoon in New York. It would mean something different. We need the words to support the pictures. Search engine optimization is a great example of this. You guys have probably heard about the importance of improving, of including great keywords into your web copy, right? Getting those words in that feed Google and help you get found. Because let's face it, we're not all Amazon. People don't always come looking for us. We have to create opportunities to introduce ourselves to the world, and search engine marketing is one way of doing that. People tend to focus on the words, but the fact of the matter is, there are one billion Google image searches performed each and every day. One billion people looking for pictures that are going to answer their question and help inform their world. So by including great pictures that answer those questions on your website, in your blogs, and in your web copy, you're going to be able to reach an entirely new audience. And because so many fewer people are using well-labeled, search-friendly pictures in their copy, you can rank on keywords that you couldn't hope to rank on for web results alone. Additionally, it's not just about feeding these search engines. Pictures also tremendously help us in terms of human content. Blog posts that include images receive three times more traffic than those without because humans like them. They're more likely to share those pictures on their social networks, right? And pictures are tremendously useful there as well. When you look at all of the social networks that have risen that are based entirely on pictures, things like Pinterest, Instagram, Tumblr, none of those would have existed without them. Even when we look at Facebook, which is kind of the 800-pound uh, gorilla of social networking right now, when you share a photo from your company page, people are two times more likely to interact with that photo than they are with text alone. When we say interaction, we mean liking it, commenting on it, sharing it, helping you spread your message throughout Facebook and throughout the entire internet ecosystem. All because you share a photo. Photos are what people want, and it's our job as marketers and our job as business owners and startups to give people what they want and let them help us help. So you're saying to me, Allison, that sounds great. That all sounds wonderful. I'm on board. I've got a limited time. I've got a limited budget. How do I start doing this? The first thing that most
there's no way to show that in pictures. But we find that people really get to the heart of their story, the best ways to tell it, when they strip away all that stuff. You work at a computer company, but what do you really do? What problem do you solve for people? Who is your customer, and how do you help them every day? That's when the images that are going to tell your story start to reveal themselves. For instance, you might show pictures of your customers. You might show graphs that explain how you help them, how you help them increase productivity, how you help them grow their business, how you help people lead better lives. Whatever story it is that you have to tell, there's a way to tell it through pictures. Another great technique is sharing pictures of faces, pictures of real people, your employees, your customers. As human beings, we feel hardwired to respond to faces. We like seeing ourselves in other people. It's the narcissist, not so deep down in all of us, right? We respond to that. When we include pictures in advertising, research shows people are more likely to trust those companies, and they're ultimately more likely to make purchasing decisions. Show the humanity behind your brand, and you'll be amazed at the results. And just in case you think that your brand isn't visual, I want to give you one little example to take away with you. And that is the story of something that's not very sexy, and something you probably see every day. A simple sandwich cookie created one of the best visual content strategies in history. If you can't see this, it's an Oreo cookie, colored red, with two tracks in it, commemorating the landing of the Mars rover. In a simple, smart image that's not terribly difficult to put together, they connected their brand to a bigger image. They connected it to something fun and curious and playful, and they're reaping those results. So I encourage you to get out there, find visual opportunities in your story, and create your visual content strategy.